Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm John Mark Dempsey, and uh, I'm a radio television <coughs> faculty member. Uh, and uh, we have uh, had our Lions After Dark program on KETR now for more years than uh, I probably realize. I think we started in 2010, so it's, we're now going on seven, eight years with this, and uh, we're grateful to you all for making that that possible. Uh, I'm going to just speak very, very briefly here, and then I'm going to let Elizabeth Rodriguez uh, talk to you. Let me first of all, introduce Elizabeth Rodriguez and Drew Ivory, and uh, they are the hosts of Lions After Dark Monday through Thursday night from 9 to 11 p.m. on KETR. Uh, and uh, Elizabeth is an Honors College student and is a radio TV major. Drew is not a radio TV major, and you're business majors? Uh, human performance. Major. Human, okay. Uh, but uh, so, so it's not absolutely necessary that the, the, the host be an RTV major, although usually they are, but, but Drew is, is an exception. Uh, we are asking the same amount that we asked last year, which is $11,500 of that. <clears throat> uh, $10,500 would go to uh, pay the, the hosts, and the program is on when school is in session. So it's on the fall uh, semester through finals week, and we knock off until the spring semester begins, and uh, it goes uh, through finals week again, and then we're on in the summer for, for eight weeks. Uh, uh, we think the show contributes to campus life. We, we, we have, in the past year, we have um, started hosting um, more guests uh, from various organizations. But again, I'm going to shut up and let uh, Elizabeth tell you more because I'm, I'm probably going to step on some of her stuff. So, Elizabeth Rodriguez. Hello. Um, as he mentioned, we're the hosts of Lions After Dark. We would like to mention also that we have several contributors that come in consistently throughout the week. So we have a sports night. We have students that are not RTV majors who are very interested in sports come in and talk about that. We also have um, other students who are just interested in what we talk about, the music that we play, and they enjoy being a part of the show. And so one of our main objectives is just to service the campus and the students on campus. And so one of our main ways of doing that is, as Dr. Dempsey mentioned, having guests on the show. Um, and so this is just one of the examples. The, these are two players from the softball team, and I believe this was two weeks ago, um, coming up to one of their big games. We have them on the show, just asking them, you know, their practice techniques, what they were excited about, what brought them to commerce, and things like that. I believe these are important interviews to have our student athletes within our program because we are, of course, a Division II school. You don't get the kind of publicity you do for your athletes at the Division II level. They don't have reporters coming up to them after games to interview them, ask them questions, how they feel about the season, if they're from out of state, how they like the, the school, the difference between their former school and this school. And uh, one of them, the, the freshman picture here in the, the hoodie right here, she was, it's, it's kind of a new experience for her, and it kind of gets the comfortability level going, just in case we ever kind of get that program going here to where we get uh, sideline reporters or anything, just to get her frequently used to a scenario like this, because there's a Lions Roar podcast held by the athletics team, and this is, of course, what we do. And I think it's just a fun activity. They enjoy it. They have a really good time. They have their friends listen in, so it just expands once we have student athletes and organizations participate. Besides athletics, we also have um, staff and faculty from the university on the show. This is Nick Patras from the Counseling Center. Um, and coming up to the uh, Mental Health Matters event on campus, we had him in several times. And we even had the opportunity to meet the guest speaker as well um, and interact with him on Twitter, our Twitter page. And so this is a lot of promotion for their events, for what they um, kind of stand for and what they want the students to know because you know they can use their Twitter their Facebook to reach out to the students but this is just another outlet for them to use in order to reach the students who were not uh, who didn't see those different social media posts we do think that Elizabeth and Drew maintain a Facebook page and a Twitter page so if, uh, if when they have Nick or someone on very often they'll do a live Facebook feed so if someone does not happen to be listening to them at 9.30 on a Wednesday night or whatever, 
Nick can share that face that Facebook feed on, on his Facebook page the next day and reach people that, that he knows and, and who like him and, and know him. Uh, so that's another way for us to, to extend the reach of the program and that's been very helpful. Uh, their, their Facebook and, and Twitter uh, feeds. I'm yeah. sorry, Luke. Yeah, we try to do the Twitter feeds as well. You know, Twitter has Periscope, it's the same kind of live feed as, as Facebook does. Just to get this message out here, because uh, I believe we're kind of a sensitive university as of right now, because in recent years, in the past one or two, we've had a couple of suicides, of course, that we all know from our president and a student on campus. So I think it is extremely important that we have guests like Nick coming in every weekend. Personally, he's my favorite guest that we've had. Always have a great time with Nick in the studio. And uh, it also helped having Nick in the studio once we had the speaker, Kevin Hines, there, because Kevin Hines now follows our um, another guest that we had were uh, two members of the new group Responsible Lions on campus, which uh, consists of student athletes as well. Um, and th just another group that kind of getting their name out there, what they stand for, and just spreading their message out to a larger group of students who maybe don't follow them on Twitter yet or aren't aware of their activities going on on campus, things like that. We were uh, runner-ups for a National Broadcast Society Award this semester, so that was a big deal for us. Um, we haven't entered any competitions in the past couple of years, but this year we decided to go ahead and do it, and we didn't do too poorly, I don't think, so. Um, that, was, that was an exciting thing for us as we're getting more hosts on. We're just kind of um, reestablishing the program, changing a few things around, and it's shown to do us some good. Also, this is a picture of us at Tailgate at the KETR booth this past fall. Just another way that we are able to interact with the students face-to-face, -face, not just over the radio. Um, play games. This is where we also handed out our t-shirts whenever we had those as well. Um, and just a fun time for us to get out on campus and interact with students, get their input, what they want, what kind of music they like, what kind of topics they would like for us to discuss, things like that. Because Ultimately, our show is for the students. We want to know what they want us to provide for them. And so that's one of our main objectives, is just feedback from the people that we come in contact with, what they like, dislike, and things like that. Sydney Basie there in the middle was a, 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 a third host during the fall semester, and she was uh, getting course credit for, for working on the program. And, and uh, she's uh, participated some this semester, but, but has not been a regular uh, on, on the program this, this and as you can see, since you noticed this is a Snapchat filter, we got our own <laughs> Snapchat finally. So we've expanded. We don't just have a couple of social medias. We've gone to get them all. Now. We have Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We've got all pretty much what you need. And I think that important things like this, as far as tailgates or any other ideas that may come to mind, like doing a show in the student center or something like that, I think it's very important. Uh, to get outreach to students, to let them know that we're here, we are a radio station, you guys can be a part of this as well, whether that be being a part of the show, like we are, hosting, and, uh, or just being a guest to let the, the school know what your organization does, what you love about the school, and what your opinion is about Lines After Dark, if you like the show or whether you do not like the show, which we, of course, hope you do. Uh, we do it for the students, of course. Okay, time. Do we have any more time? Is that all of our time? Yeah. But we're fine then. We're ready to answer any questions. We are very, very pleased about the uh, National Broadcasting Society uh, honor and uh, because that is on a national scale. So we Excellent. Questions? It sounds like you all have some good success stuff going on. thinking on this and Elizabeth graduates in the fall. Do you graduate in the fall? Or? No, probably another year. No, okay, so Drew's gonna be around. Elizabeth's got one more semester beyond the uh, the, the, the summer. Uh, I, but I, I always am uh, part of this and, and will be as long as this continues to be funded and as long as I'm uh, on faculty here. Uh, I always like to see more participation. Uh, 
I ur I urged them to get as many different voices on the airs as possible. That so if you want to talk about growth, that's the growth that I would see is more participation uh, by by students, uh, not in the radio TV program either as as uh, regular host. Uh, uh, volunteer hosts, maybe once a, a week, or just coming in from time to time as guests to talk about whatever their activity is. So the more voices we hear, the better. It's basically a music program, but they know that the that big thing is anybody can play their own music, you know, on their iPod or whatever. So the thing is what they do between the songs that, that make it valuable. So uh, we, would, <clears throat> we would love to have more student organizations uh, having their voices on the program and, and academic organizations as well. And, and I think that in the last year we've, we've uh, made some strides there. We had some nice uh, comments in our uh, proposal here from Nick Patras and Jason Bone, Jonathan Johnston, Maria Ramos. And, uh, those are all regular folks that, that, that we have on. So just like to bring in more people, I think, would be, would be the thing. Yeah. Is there any plans for podcasts I, don't, I love radio, let me just put it on that. So I don't, I'm not saying to replace the radio. Nothing, no, not. With our digital students. Yeah. Did you have something to say? Oh, uh, I was just going to expand on the, on the growth topic that she was talking about. That uh, uh, One example of growth that we've done is the, the last semester we had different day themes where things were. We had uh, it was Pump It Up Monday, Turn Up Tuesday, Way Back Wednesday, and Top Ten Thursday. We changed that for this semester, changed it up, tried to be more organized, make it simpler and, and different. We, we changed it, uh, we have Mixtape Monday now. Uh, Turnout Tuesday is still the same, but that is our primary sports night where we designate to usually talk about our different sports, men and women's. And by the way, when he says sports, they're mainly talking about in and commerce sports. They'll talk we about- We do, we very much include that. <clears throat> They'll talk about the Dallas teams and so the Cowboys and the Mavericks and what have you, but they make it a point to talk about the in and commerce. And uh, we added in Women's Wednesday, so we have an exclusive for our ladies. You guys are definitely not left out. It's all female artists, uh, all female topics. Uh, we just uh, decided it would be great to be different. Just a lot of different things added to, and we brought back, of course, a Throwback Thursday. Okay. To get back to your question about the podcast, we, somewhere out there is a uh, uh, SoundCloud, Tony? What's, what's right? Yeah, that's somehow that didn't say which we, we have not been active with for, for a while. I think kind of the, the Facebook page that they do uh, takes more or less that place because, because there would be no particular point of doing the podcast of the music, you know, and uh, so it's the interviews that have some value, uh, not live, but, but to play back later. So I think those are available on their Facebook page and their Twitter page. I think that probably suffices uh, there, but we're always looking to to make use of, of whatever the new uh, technology might be. And I heard Elizabeth get ready. To add to that, um, somewhat related, one of the original hosts actually had a weekly blog on the KTR Lions After Dark page, and so we were looking at that just the other day. We had her on the show, and she mentioned it, and that was something that we had discussed starting back up again, just to kind of provide another outlet to communicate and even share on our different social media pages. I'm sorry, I missed that. That's referring to Gabby Estrada? Yes. Who works for Clear Channel Communications in Dallas. Now, the other original host of the program, Heather Hutchins, is the afternoon show host on the, one of the radio stations in Greenville. Now, so they're, they're doing pretty well. In the other questions for John Mark or the students? Appreciate y'all signed today. Great, thank you. We, we appreciate the opportunity and appreciate the support thank you. for the past uh, seven years or so. Thank you, Drew. Mm -hmm. Good.